according to the 2021 LAPOP America's Barometer, more than three in five citizens from the average country in the Americas and the Caribbean believe that corruption is widespread among elected officials. Report findings highlight that the public in the region strongly asserts its desire to have a voice in politics, but many distrust elections and elected officials. This is also a great challenge we face as parliamentarians, and therefore it is crucial that key actors in the democratic system generate synergies for collaboration to build stronger, more resilient and inclusive democracies. To explain on this, we have with us Paul Masson, Chief of Country Support of the Open Government Partnership. Thank you very much for joining us on this initiative as part of OGP's Open Government, Government Week. My first question to you to get things started um, is this. What, in what ways do you think parliaments can continue to work more closely with Open Government Partnership to address these challenges as mentioned in the 2021 LAPOP America's Barometer? Thank you very much, uh, President Farley. It's a pleasure to have this conversation with you and an excellent question. As you mentioned, democracies, not only in the Americas, but across the world um, are faced with these declining levels of trust across the board, not just in government, but also in experts, media, civil society. Open government approaches, in my view, have much to offer to reinvigorate the relationship between citizens and governments, build trust in both directions. Um, it can help fight corrupt practices, for example, by opening up procurement. It can help um, strengthen service delivery by bringing in citizens into the shaping and delivery of those services and overseeing them. And it can help to ensure civic engagement throughout government practices. Open government helps leaders deliver their agenda for and with citizens. It creates dialogue and trust, not just on election day, but every day of the week. And we call that democracy beyond the ballot box on the election day and beyond. Parliaments play a key role in this, a very critical role an open parliament, um, one that opens up legislative information and creates mechanisms for public participation and accountability throughout the legislative process um, is an essential part of, of an open state, an open society, and critical to building an open trusting relationship with citizens. But also parliaments can contribute by introducing legislation relevant to open government like access to information laws, approving budgets for open government reform, uh, ensuring parliamentary oversight, and of course, creating spaces for uh, cross-party dialogue and support for this agenda, um, and to advance and institutionalize reforms, not just with one government, but across governments. For example, in countries like Armenia, Nigeria, uh, we're seeing parliaments introduce and amend legislation to advance the executive branch commitments um, on improving beneficial ownership. Uh, in the Americas, an example, uh, the Paraguay Senate committed to coordinate with the National Anti-Corruption Secretary on anti-corruption strategies. So plenty of opportunities for parliaments to engage. Thank you, Member. Paul, those are very useful tips for us as parliamentarians, and we certainly will take your very solid advice. Um, we are, of course, in a digital age, and questions of digital governance um, come to mind. Um, digital technologies are key in advancing the open government agenda. Uh, they play a significant role in streamlining governmental processes, and of course, in strengthening transparency, accountability, and participation. And that leads me to my next question to you. From the perspective of the Open Government Partnership, how can we as parliamentarians and other relevant organizations with similar mandates to OGP continue to promote digital transformation for more open and inclusive governance? Excellent question again. Um, look, in my view, open and digital governments need to be mutually reinforcing. OGP members through the years have used digital technologies to advance their open government reforms on key policy areas. At the same time, the principles behind open government, transparency, participation, accountability, are essential to catalyze a more trustworthy digital transformation agenda and environment and ensure equitable access to, to public digital goods. At the beginning of 2011, when OGP was founded, we were a bit naive. We thought uh, and looked mostly at the positive opportunities of technology that are there, and they've helped to open up information and foster dialogue. 
Um, but 10 years on, I think we're also more aware um, of the risks around digital transformation. We know that um, open government and democratic processes um, can be easily undermined if technology is used the wrong way. To give you a few examples, um, data-driven micro-targeting by unregulated digital political campaigns has shown uh, that it can influence elections, as can foreign election meddling through social media use. The use of automated decision-making has been questioned at a, as to whether it's transparent, if it doesn't discriminate, um, if it preserves privacy. Weak data privacy laws have enabled the use of digital surveillance against civil society and journalists across the region. So how do we make sure that digital approaches um, get us better government, get us more trusted government? That's where we started this conversation and rather than weaken our democracies, right? So many of these topics by nature ask for a cross-government, cross-country approach actually. Um, two examples, take the European Parliament's initiative um, through the GDPR that de facto set a global norm on data privacy. Or the Netherlands, where there's a cross-government effort, uh, including through OGP commitments, to tackle online political advertising. Those are good examples of how parliaments can play a role around digital um, transformation agendas. Open and digital government, at the end of the day, are both, once again, about building trust. And in your role as parliamentarians, um, you have the potential to build a better version of democracy. You can set the agenda, ensure oversight of the executive when they are working on this, when they are, for example, safeguarding digital rights or protecting the online and offline civic space. So once again, big role for parliaments to play. Thank you very much, I agree entirely. Another important um, issue as we do with open government is of course that of diversity. Um, at the core of open, the open government agenda is the unwavering conviction of fostering the diverse and substantive participation of traditionally marginalized groups um, in the governance process. A truly open government, of course, must serve all people, and parliaments can be instrumental in these endeavors as they represent the diversity within the citizenry. My question to you is, considering that inclusion is a fundamental principle for our democratic system, from the perspective of the open government partnership, what joint actions can we take to guarantee a broader participation of women and marginalized groups in the public decision-making process? Thank you. I think you, you had part of, of the answer in your, in your introduction, right? I think parliament um, by itself and in itself should be a representation of society and all its diversity. But what we see in open government is that to truly serve all citizens, you have to start, open government reformers have to start with recognizing that um, people are not equally involved, but also not equally affected by policy choices. And government um, policies and practices um, often systematically exclude certain groups in society, like women, like youth, sexual minorities, indigenous communities, uh, persons with disabilities, not always with the intention to do so, right? I mean, it's take the artificial intelligence that we were just talking about. If the all decision-making processes have biases built into them, the chances are high that without a conscious design, these biases will be replicated in automated decision-making. So being conscious of, of biases and who you need to speak to is a good starting point. Placing all citizens um, back at the heart of governance demands that policymakers and civil society actors for that matter and parliament and um, advocates make a active effort to bring communities into the conversation, into policy making. Um, this means actively consulting with these communities about how certain policies and certain choices will affect their needs and will improve or close gaps in the services they receive. Um, applying a inclusion lens, if you want, to all aspects of work. Now, how we see that back in open government um, around gender and inclusion, we see a big surge in countries and local governments for that matter, um, actively thinking from three, three ways. One is by including um, groups, gender groups, uh, marginalized uh, groups into conversations and decision-making processes around uh, open government, around OGP. The second one is to include specific commitments um, in action plans. And the third one is to, to apply an inclusion lens, a gender lens across the whole strategy around open government, checking 
uh, if inclusion is being taken into account when co-creating these commitments and these reforms. Um, one example, the Parliament of Sierra Leone has committed to increase the inclusion and participation of women and, and other marginalized groups um, in parliamentary activities by uh, ensuring there's an equitable budget provision for their participation, but also an increased diversity in the candidates uh, that run for public office. This approach and all the tools that we have created, of course, are available uh, to the wide community. They're out there in the public sphere, um, and we're happy to share them with, uh, with your community as well. Well, I want to thank you very much for sharing some time and very important insights um, on behalf of the Open Government Partnership. It is clear from our conversation and from your work that in our efforts to strengthen ongoing Open Parliament initiatives, we must insist on bringing about a broad universal stakeholder including parliamentary staff and civil society organizations. And of course, to continue to provide institutional spaces for substantive citizenship participation. We must also strengthen and use the accessibility of digital technologies as they become increasingly indispensable for increasing and achieving more inclusive and resilient de democracies that leave no one behind. Digital transformation, of course, needs to provide a voice for everybody and to guarantee that gender and other social inequalities are not reproduced so that it can serve to strengthen democratic representation. Once again, Paul, I thank you. Thank you very much.